What's up, y'all? This is Ron. Uh, we're here for the I Really Mean It podcast recording uh, for today, June the 12th of 2018. Um, we're getting ready to get started on the show, but I wanted to jump on real quick um, and just uh, let everybody know to be safe out here. Uh, you got the snow and ice, and you know how that is in this city. So make sure that you're safe if you're having to travel uh, on the roads or just out and about today. Uh, just be careful out here. So I'm going to give uh, everybody a chance to jump on. We're going to go through the intro, and uh, we're going to get into today's proceedings. Man, I'm really excited about today's episode. Um, as you can see, I'm actually I'm home today, and uh, I'm out here on the deck uh, in the backyard here in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, cold as hell out here, as you can imagine, but uh, one of the beautiful things about podcasts is that I can come uh, from anywhere because I'm mobile, baby. So, uh, no cushy studio for me today. Uh, I'm outside, uh, braving the elements, uh, and thought I'd come to you from outside, uh, here in the snow. And so, uh, as you can see, I'm gonna take you around real quick, uh, just through the backyard and whatnot. I think I'm the only person out here today, uh, but it's all good, so... We're going to go ahead and get this thing started. If you want to join on on the podcast, you can do so by uh, just typing in the comments, let me on Ron, and uh, I'll invite you on if you want to talk about today's topic. So we're going to go ahead and get started, and um, let's just do it. No, a lot of y'all are home today. Man, make your eyes water out here, baby. <laughs> Shoot, being here outside. Y'all know I'm crazy, right? Like I said, we're just going through the intro and then we're going to get started. Man. Boy, it's wild out here, boy. Oof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good afternoon to you. This is Ron Brooks. This is the I Really Mean It podcast, episode number 29, coming to you on Friday, January the 12th of 2018. We are well into the new year, which is really exciting. And um, we've got an interesting topic on today we want to discuss. But um, before I get started, uh, shout out to everybody that is watching on Facebook Live. What's up, everybody? Uh, if you happen to be on my Facebook page, personal page, you can go there. And I'm actually uh, live here as I'm recording the show. And you can join the show. Let me on Ron is the hashtag. So go to my Facebook page, Let me on Ron, and you can join. And be. I'll invite you on. You can be part of the conversation on today's topic, which is, again, episode 29, how narratives shape or how images, rather, shape narratives, how images shape narratives. And we're going to dig into a little bit of the H&M uh, controversy or fiasco <laughs> from this week. It's been a busy week. Um, it, it's been cold here in Memphis for those that are uh, most of this country, uh, particularly in the southeast, uh, that is not accustomed to this cold. Now, I was originally born in Chicago myself, and... I was actually born here in January. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So my blood's pretty thick. But for those that uh, have uh, traced their origins here in the South and live here in the South, it's uh, something that they're not quite accustomed to, this type of weather that we've had sustained uh, for some time. But 
nonetheless, I'm actually out here. So if you hear some wind, uh, I'm actually outside. I was working from home today. Uh, I do have to get out uh, in a little bit, but I was working from home today. And y'all know that I'm crazy. So I'm actually outside. I'm on my deck. I'm chilling, literally, <laughs> um, here on my deck in the backyard here in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, one of the beautiful things about doing podcasts is, particularly when you're mobile, such as I am, uh, we don't have to be in a cushy studio. We can come out and brave the elements uh, and go anywhere that we want to go. Uh, is that right? We can go anywhere that we want to go. So shout out to everybody on Facebook Live. Shout out to everybody listening to the podcast. You can listen and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, iHeartRadio, YouTube, SoundCloud, any of those places uh, that you can listen and subscribe. Thank you to everybody who has done so, uh, so far. But Let's go ahead and get into it. Um, I want to give special thanks to Brittany Thornton, who is the founder of Juice Orange Bound, who was my guest on last week. We were live at Soulfish over in the Midtown area. And uh, go back and listen. That was last week's episode. Uh, but definitely thank you, uh, Brittany, for uh, your presence and for your insight uh, on things related to Orange Mound and that situation that involves Kroger's continuing to manifest itself. And we'll see, uh, how that lands. But again, today's topic, how images shape narratives is what we're going to discuss today. Again, it's been a busy week. Uh, you had Oprah's speech at the Golden Globe. Uh, we've had president Donald Trump continuing to make statements and, uh, make moves that, uh, really suggests that uh, there's not quite an understanding of the role as president of the United States. And that has upset some people about comments he's made about other countries and comments he's made about individuals and things like that. And I will have a show where I will dig into uh, some more um, as it relates to those kind of uh, topics. Um, yeah, the gentleman that released the book about Donald Trump this week that was controversial, controversial rather, and the president uh, attempting to silence that. Um, not sure how successful he's going to be with that. But nonetheless, um, we're here and uh, hope that you're enjoying uh, a cold, bitter cold uh, Friday. So how images shape narratives. So on this week, there uh, was a image that was released by the company H&M. Uh, they have locations here in Memphis and kind of around the country and, quite frankly, around the world. And if you're not familiar with H&M, uh, they are a kind of clothing lifestyle store or franchise. Um, I'm not really sure where they're based. Um, they seem to be kind of all over and they do business all over. Um, so I didn't really dig into a lot of H&M's background. I'm sure that those that are familiar with H&M and those that shop uh, at H&M uh, certainly are very familiar. So anyway, uh, there was a, a young boy, a young uh, black boy who is a model or was selected as a model for H&M. And there is a hoodie that he wore. Of course, um, you know, when you bring in these child models and things like that, they tend to put them on various articles of, articles of clothing. In some cases, they Photoshop in the image, so they may have on a blank T-shirt or they may have on a blank hoodie or dress shirt or whatever it is that they have on. And then it's Photoshopped, whatever the image is. And you see this on social media and online a whole lot where they take an image of an athlete or an actor, actress, that kind of thing, and, and then change out the images and things like that. You've seen it with Kobe Bryant and LeBron James and Ice Cube and... Um, you know, Rosario Dawson and, and the such. The controversy that came from this week uh, with this particular situation was um, the uh, black boy who was the model for H&M had on a hoodie, a green hoodie, and the verbiage on the hoodie read, coolest monkey in the jungle. Okay, I'll repeat that. The verbiage said, coolest monkey in the jungle. Uh, of course, we live in the United States of America, and this country is no short for its uh, history as it relates to race relations, as it relates to bigotry, as it relates to uh, racism. 
on all different fronts and at all different levels, some overt and some covert. So as you could imagine in this country, when an image is released to the United States of America that has a, a black kid, um, good handsome young man, healthy young man, that has on a hoodie that reads coolest monkey in the jungle, you have to understand that that's going to uh, rub a few people the wrong way. <laughs> Just a few, right? And so that created a controversy on this week uh, that uh, reached some very heavy proportions, such that uh, you had uh, famous people speaking out against it. Um, one LeBron James of the uh, NBA, the Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, had an Instagram post on this week speaking out against uh, the image you had other people speak out against it uh, the weekend who is a R&B rap uh, star uh, distanced himself from H&M as a result of the controversy and as a result of the image as you could imagine um, again in, in the United States images such as that are going to be offensive to a number of people, and not just black people. They're going to be offensive to a number of people, given, again, the history of the term or referring to black people as monkeys and things like that throughout the history. One of the things that came out that was interesting, too, was uh, after several days, uh, the boy's mother makes a statement. Uh, the boy's mother uh, has been publicized. Uh, she's from uh, Stockholm, Sweden. Her name is Terry Mango. And so Miss Mango, or Mrs. Mango, whichever one that that is, um, saw the controversy, obviously was made informed of the controversy, even from Sweden. And she decides to make a, a statement about it in terms of her personal feelings on the controversy. So I'm going to quote uh, Miss Mango. She says, I'm the mom. And this is one of hundreds of outfits my son has modeled. Stop crying wolf all the time. Unnecessary issue here. Get over it. If I bought that jumper and put it on him and posted it on my pages, would that make me racist? I get people's opinions, but they are not mine. So that is the quote from uh, the boy's mother, Terry Mango, who is of uh, Sweden descent. So a couple things I want to dig into really quick with this. And again, if you're on Facebook Live and you want to join in, don't be scared. Don't be fearful. Uh, don't worry about your background and all that kind of thing. Go to a room uh, that you don't have to worry about folks seeing uh, the background in your house. Or if you're somewhere you're not supposed to be and all that kind of thing. Uh, but you can join in this uh, conversation. One of the things that's, that's interesting about her feedback that um, I wanted to make sure that I brought up as it relates to this particular topic is because just because people are black and I want to, you know, I'm going to say this simply and um, I may step on a few toes and I may offend a few people with this particular comment that I'm going to make. Um, but everybody that's black ain't from Harlem. <laughs> you know, everybody that's black is not from Chicago or every or Jackson, Mississippi or uh, Nashville, Tennessee or Little Rock, Arkansas or Los Angeles, California. OK, so everybody's not just because people are black doesn't mean that um, they in particular were born in the continent of Africa, nor were they born in the country of the United States. Um, one thing that people have to understand is that uh, we have people of color that live all around this world. And I think people know that, but they, they tend to uh, maybe sometimes forget. And so when things like this come up, there's an assumption that uh, everybody around the world is accustomed to American culture and how uh, things like this have been viewed. Now, let's not be silly here. If you think that there's no level of racism in Sweden, you're really lying to yourself. There's so much anti-Semitism uh, uh, in the European countries, if you go back to Germany, with Nazi Germany, and things of that nature. Um, what you find, though, one of the things that's different um, in other countries, as opposed to America, 
is that in America, racism is based often on appearance and association. So it's often based on skin color. It's a based on, um, you know, uh, geography in some sense where people live and, and the such. When you get overseas, racism is not as overt in so much in how someone looks and their appearance. It's often based on affiliation, particularly religious affiliation. So, like I mentioned, there's a lot of anti-Semitism. Um, there's a lot of uh, bashing of uh, Judaism and, and things of that nature. And then there's also um, bashing of uh, the Muslim culture and Muslim faith. And so that's some of the things that's different on how it kind of compares and contrasts to America. So when you look at Ms. Mong Mango, uh, I believe it is, Ms. Mango's uh, comments, and there were some that suggested, well, she's out of touch or she doesn't really understand, and that may be true. So I'm not here to necessarily debate that uh, with anybody because uh, that may be true, it may be false. One of the things that you have to look at and how she made that comment and looking at um, where she grew up and where she currently lives is racism's viewed in those different ways. So when she looks at coolest monkey in the jungle, she don't see as much of a problem with that. Now, there may be reasons for that. Obviously, that's her son, and uh, he's a young boy. She's coming to the defense. Um, there's no doubt that uh, I'm sure she did do this pro bono uh, with H&M. So she probably got a, a fairly sizable check uh, as a result of her son being uh, hired as a model for the company. So I, I don't want to get this thing, you know, misconstrued or, um, you know, uh, you know, not hit the nail on the head with this. But um, the what Mrs. Vago may not quite understand. Or she may not. She may not get the full grasp. And I, I and I, I don't know her. Um, I don't know what her exposure has been to the United States. Um, I could only assume that she's uh, been exposed to Westernized culture, and maybe she stepped foot on American soil. I don't know. Um, but one thing that you have to look at is. When, when those kind of images are offensive, and I'm going to get to H&M here in a second because they're certainly not off the hook with this, and this is not their first time with this level of controversy. Um, they've had more recent controversies with other images uh, that they've placed on articles of clothing. And you know articles of clothing have always been used, particularly once you had the advent of the T-shirt uh, back in the 20th century, the mid-20th century or so, when the T-shirt came around, it... It's always been used as a, a platform for giving up images or uh, shaping narratives or advertising, per se, right now today. So T-shirt companies exist, and they're used for advertising. Many of you in business uh, or you work for a company that has company T-shirts, and you have a company T-shirt or polo or things like that. Why? Because you want to project your brand or... Uh, shape your narrative with what your company represents or the company you work for represents. So Ms. Mango probably does not quite understand um, the impact uh, of that image on this young boy. Now, again, the, the topic of this show is how images shape narratives, right? So if you look at the young boy, he's, I would imagine he's anywhere from six to eight years old, uh, given that I have three young daughters that look like they're about his age. So I would imagine he's somewhere between six and eight years old would be my assumption. So if you put that on there, so other, think of other people who see H&M's images. There are a lot of children, there are a lot of adults, there are a lot of people from a lot of different walks of life and cultures who see that. And so think of what that continues to perpetuate. Remember, I spoke earlier about some of the history in this country as it relates to relating monkeys to uh, black people and uh, you know, Native uh, Americans and whatnot. So when you project that kind of image in 2017 going into 2018, what, what you're doing from h and standpoint, either someone grossly doesn't understand and someone's just that much out of touch, or 
there was a particular agenda with this to be able to uh, continue to uh, give off that type of narrative. And so what you see is, and, and remember I talked earlier you know, about some of the comments that uh, President Trump has made and where some of the racial climate is in this country even today, how it's been not so much resurrected, because it, it wasn't as if it went underground, but how it's been uh, perpetuated and overtly presented much more than it had been in the previous years. And so when you continue to um, have these type of images shown and perpetuated, see, some people may think, oh, it's not that big a deal. Um, you know, we, we've gotten past those times and, you know, you, you got to be able to move forward, Ron. And, and there's, there is some truth to that. That, you know, so that's not something I completely disagree with. However, when you continue to showcase certain images, right, um, what that does is psychologically it implants that into minds, right, even into subconscious. And I'm not a psychologist or anything like that or sociologist or any of that kind of thing. But when, when you continue to project certain images in things, it, it allows for people to have that uh, embedded in their brain which begin shapes their mood or their approach or their uh, their view of such things you know if let's just say you continue to put this coolest monkey in the jungle let's just say that became popular nobody said anything and they were selling like hotcakes so let's just say you've got a a t-shirt business or you've got a clothing business and you start selling coolest jungle coolest uh, monkey in the jungle hoodies and they're selling like hotcakes you can't even keep them on the shelves so every you know people are walking around with this hoodie on and let's also say that this hoodie is being worn primarily or predominantly by black people black children black men black women whoever so what image is that then given off over a period of time right that's giving off an image that, um, in, in fun and in jest, in this country, because people tie monkey to black people. There, there is a subculture or, or subset of people in this country who today do that. And that's been a legacy thing over some time. Um, and so it's very important and very critical that if you're in business if you're working for a company, whatever, whichever the case, or you're doing both, um, I want to share a few best practices that you could take and implement um, in, in your business, in your company that you work for and whatnot. So I want to start with that. I want, so one of the first things that you have to look at in your business is you have to research and understand what images mean, and what certain words put together mean. So you have to understand it if you're presenting it in the English uh, uh, language or uh, Spanish language or French or Mandarin or, or whatever it is, whatever language that you're presenting in, uh, Japanese, Chinese, whatever that is, you've got to make sure that you research and understand what that image projects and what it means, right? Certain images, certain things in different cultures, and I won't expound on this too much, but uh, you kind of get the gist and understand. Certain things be different uh, in various cultures or various countries or within various uh, racial groups or subcultures, whatever it is. They have different meaning. And you want to make sure in your business. So if you're going to use a certain image as your logo or you're going to use a certain image on uh, company paraphernalia, you're going to use certain uh, images or verbiage in your letterhead, whatever that is, right? Make sure you've taken the time to do the research to understand what it means. Because something that could be one thing here in America, or even within America, within your culture, could be one thing, and something totally different somewhere else. So make sure that you understand that. And if you're in your business and you've got ties to marketing or you know advertising within your business or whatever it is, you're in social media, website, you're in sales, whatever it is, you got to make sure that that image um, has been vetted. So that's the, one of the first things that you have to do. 
The other thing that you have to do in terms of, you know, again, a best practice to uh, try to avoid this level of controversy within your business or your company is beyond the research, you have to make sure that you've done your, your complete due diligence on um, the, you know, not just what it means today, but what it's even meant in the past. What you've seen, a lot of things have been resurrected. You've seen in this country, um, a lot of uh, movies and things are just regurgitations of the past. So you haven't seen a lot of new ideas recently in the last several years. You've seen um, uh, music studios and you see movie production companies. They're, they're remaking old movies and they're, they're bringing back old TV shows. And, of course, sampling and music has always been a big thing, but it's even more so now. Uh, to the point now that you have artists completely just taking a old uh, a old record and just going over it, you know, just a, a complete 100% sample. And so you got to make sure too that in your research that you go back sometime and you're looking into the past as to how was this utilized or what did it mean in the past because something may be out of style today and then be back in style tomorrow. And then here's your business with something that you've spent time building, cultivating, and investing in. And then here it goes. Now you're in a position where you're facing controversy for something that you did 10 years ago that now is back in style or now back to the forefront. You know, in today's world of social media and hashtags and people again resurrecting the past and things like that, it doesn't take much, you know, to. Uh, resurrect something and then have it be in the forefront or in the mainstream again. So be careful about that uh, in your business or in your company. Um, something else you want to make sure of too is if you do happen to put something out that is offensive, uh, that uh, rubs people the wrong way at any significant kind of level. Now again, you're not going to be able to please everybody with everything. But in the case of something like this, where you've got a hoodie that says coolest monkey in the jungle, yeah, you're going to offend a, a hell of a lot of people, right? So make sure that if you do do something and it offends a group of people, a nation of people, that kind of thing, that you address it head on. Don't run and hide. Don't uh, try to deflect it uh, or any of that kind of thing. Take ownership of it and address it right there head on and be prepared that you may have to make an adjustment or pivot or make a change. There's nothing wrong with that. But what is wrong is when you just overtly go, um, whether it's your intention to um, offend people or whether it is your, you know, not your intention, but that tends to happen as to um, just as part of whatever happens uh, that comes your way. So whether your intent was there or not, uh, almost become somewhat irrelevant to how you address it. So you got to make sure that you address it head on. So if you get even beyond just the hoodie in terms of how images, if you look up and down, go in your city and you drive up and down some of the major streets, um, there's all kinds of advertising here in Memphis uh, on Poplar Avenue or Winchester or Austin P Highway or Shelby Drive or whatever Germantown Parkway, Highway 64, uh, whatever street that you're going down, Goodman Road, Broadway over in West Memphis, uh, Danny Thomas, where, wherever it is that you're going, Union Avenue, Park Avenue, uh, and w whatever city that you're in, whatever major streets, you have a lot of advertising. There's a lot of images being used. Social media, there's images, people posting images, people posting videos all day long. And they're shaping narratives. You know, one of the things that came out of this past election cycle was some of the controversy with Facebook and how uh, they were allegedly uh, sharing or, or creating images or allowing images to, to try to point uh, people's attention to a particular candidate uh, that was running for president at the time. And so they've come under some scrutiny and some uh, controversy with that. And so that tells you how images can be used. Um, you and your business, or you at your company, your company utilizes imagery with their logo and their marketing promotion. All of that has some logic to it, hopefully. 
and even in your business. You have logic behind the images that you use to promote your business, whether you're starting up or you've been in business 75 years, right? The logo that you use, the font that you use, the, uh, the, the character or the um, fanatic that you use or whatever, the, uh, you know, whatever characters that you use to represent your company, uh, color schemes, all those kind of things are designed to create a, a certain image that then helps shape the narrative that you want to put out there, right? So if you want your company to come off as professional and crisp and things like that, you use a certain uh, font, you use a certain image, you use a certain color. So we all do that. Um, the, the controversy here with H&M is that when you put out, again, a hoodie with the coolest monkey in the jungle, you're, you're shaping an image, and that's what companies like H&M, uh, all of us that have businesses, and all of us that work for businesses, need to make sure that we're cognizant of. And so, you know, as you look at this thing and you look at some of the best practices, um, I'm hoping that you're able to take some value in being able to go back and you know, assess the images that you put out. And many of you have goals and, and things like that that are underway here for you as we're early in the 2018. And you wanna make sure that, again, you, you've done your due diligence with these kind of things and look at uh, and learn from things like the H&M uh, controversy and other controversies and be able to apply those uh, in your business or in your walk. It, it's critically important that, that you do that. And so well, I'm not sure where H&M and all that's going to land. I'm, I'm sure they, they're addressing it now. Um, you know, they're going to have to be careful. <laughs> obviously going forward because they're, they're kind of on thin ice with uh, some things and um, you know when you present images like that that offend culture uh, we're in a day and time now where people will act you know we went through this lull period um, through maybe some of the end of the 90s and early 2000s and whatnot where and you know where people were kind of you know kind of lousy fair sometimes in some ways towards things they were just kind of like ah uh, whatever you know people were you know allowed distractions you know that just kind of come up but now people are really you, you see people really engaged um people are getting involved politically people are, are looking at these things speaking out you're seeing celebrities now speaking out where for a while they wouldn't you know um you know folks like michael jordan right would you know didn't he wasn't one to speak out on these kind of things or and it's not just him uh, many others uh, weren't real vocal but now you're seeing guys um, and girls that are extremely vocal you, you see the me too movement and some different things that are going on um, coming you saw Oprah speech and some of the things that rounded out 2017 as it related to sexual harassment uh, as it related to uh, unequal uh, pay for women versus men for the same role with the same credentials with the same experience right so yeah th this country is continuing to evolve and you want to make sure that you're evolving with it so be cognizant of the images that you present in your business uh, I also suggest as a best practice is to um, you know, whether your business if your business is at a point where you can hire uh, people and you can hire a, a brand strategist or uh, something like that, uh, a marketing expert, uh, suggest that you do that. Uh, you may sit there and say, well, Ron, you know, I'm still starting up. I, you know, it's just me. You know, I don't have that, that kind of budget. I don't have money to, to pay anybody. That's fine. That's why you're on social media. That's why you, you're connected. Hopefully you have a network of people uh, and you hang around the type of people that you can get good, honest feedback from that will share with you, right? That, uh, that level of um, expertise, hopefully, to be able to help you address uh, certain things. So uh, I hope this has been valuable content for you. Um, again, the idea is not to just get into a whole lot of slammy of H&M, H &M, excuse me. That's gonna happen, that's already underway. Um, the biggest thing for y'all is I wanna make sure that you take this and that you can apply it uh, to your daily walk. So thank you so much for joining. Listen, I do want to make a, a quick announcement. Um, this will be the last episode of the 
I Really Mean It podcast. Um, we are re redoing a slight rebrand. Uh, speaking of images to control narratives, right? We're doing a slight rebrand from the I Really Mean It podcast to the Minding Your Business podcast. Um, and we are extremely excited about that, um, mainly because of, of a few things. One, we want to continue to evolve. Uh, we want to make sure that we continue to deliver the, the type of content that you're looking for. Um, we want to make sure that people find the podcast and know exactly what kind of content they're going to get. And I'm going to jump into this more on next week. Uh, so on next Friday, uh, you'll be listening to the revamp of the I Really Mean It podcast to the Minding Your Business podcast. We're going to have a, a new image. Uh, some of you have seen it. I've posted it on social media. I've gotten great feedback with that. There's going to be a whole new intro. Um, but the same great content, we're going to talk about entrepreneurship. We're going to talk about real estate. And we're going to talk about some trending news topics and best practices that you could incorporate in your business or on your job uh, that come about from uh, news trends, good, bad, or ugly. So uh, I thank you so much. We're going to continue. Uh, I'll continue to be here uh, every Friday afternoon. Uh, we'll be live on Facebook Live uh, at noon every Friday. So that's going to continue. It's still going to be me. And uh, we're going to just keep doing this thing. Um, I thank you so much for joining. Uh, on this particular podcast again make sure that you listen subscribe itunes stitcher iHeartRadio, soundcloud all those kind of things i'm out here in the cold still um so i'm getting ready to get in get me something hot to drink um do some of the things that y'all probably doing if you're uh snowed in but um even my dog's calling me right now because he see me so anyway i am rgb this is the I Really Mean It podcast, and we'll see y'all tomorrow, man. Peace, because I'm going to come right back tomorrow and give you some more content uh, on my Facebook page, and uh, we'll be back for the Minding Your Business podcast uh, on next Friday at noon. So definitely peace to y'all.